Hi, this is Pastor Tabitha Purple. Uh, we are doing uh, day five of our daily devotionals. Um, this is the daily devotional series I do in seven day blocks. Um, I hope that this one inspires you to really go back and read the story of the crucifixion, the story of our Lord Jesus, that you can have a real connection to him. So the scripture for today is taken from 1st John uh, first John 5 and it's taken from verse 7 so first John 5 verse 7 first John is in the New Testament it's one of the letters written by one of Jesus's disciples John um, and in this letter he says the following so he says that for there are three that testify the spirit the water and the blood and these three are in agreement now, I was thinking about this and I thought, of course, there is a good piece of theological arguments that we're going to make now. Now, when we talk about the spirit, the water and the blood, we talk about the Holy Spirit, the baptism of Jesus and the blood at the cross. And these three things tell the story, the big meta narrative over who Jesus was and what he came to achieve. And it's amazing when you see the Holy Spirit that was upon him, how he worked how he did good, how he had compassion for people. You see God just being God and being amazing with people. But you also see him speaking truth to power. You see him telling those in power, hey, listen, you're taking advantage of people. This isn't right. You are snakes. Don't do that. And so there's both sides of the Holy Spirit working. And we see that in the throughout the whole Bible, this narrative of the compassion for the people who are suffering, but all the time challenging the power narrative, which is that power corrupts people. If you have any story you can pick up in the Bible, if there's power involved in any way, shape or form, we guarantee there's corruption coming. Like just keep reading, somebody's, somebody's gonna do something that's not nice. And so you have that narrative and then you have Jesus's baptism when you get that moment when the skies open and you get the voice from heaven ascending with the dove and Jesus in the water and you get all three present and John is witness to this, his cousin, the prophet. It's an amazing moment which tells tells the world that Jesus is the one, the one that we've been waiting for. And then comes the cross, the suffering servant, the one who came to ultimately bear our sins, to ultimately give that burden on of our stuff and take that on board once and for all, for all time, just to we don't have to do daily sacrifices. We don't have to keep renewing. All we have to do is to believe to have faith, to put trust in, to have that relationship, to have that continual conversation with God. Keep, just just do that. Like it's not, there is no other magical formula. There's no, no ritual you have to do. Believe in the name of Jesus. Believe in the God of the Bible. You can do that. When you do that, you are saved. It's, amen, it's wonderful. So it got me to thinking, what three things work well together in actually our own life because in the life of Jesus they worked beautifully and seamlessly. So being a Christian I have uh, been to church most of my life. Sometimes it's worked brilliantly, sometimes it's been horrendous. People like if you're around people it's difficult. Um, so one thing that I would say for me that is part of my trio is church. Church is family, it's home, it's it's the place where um, faith is enacted, where comfort is given, where friends are made, where, you know, life is restored, where energy is given. You know, I, I find that church is one of my trio. The other thing that I find is that friends are another one of my trio and then faith is another one of my trio. So I have these three things that kind of underpin my life that make it all work together. I have amazing friends. Over the years, I've had um, some of the best spectacular friendships. You know, I, I love my friends. I'm grateful for each one of them that's been a part of my life that God has placed there to encourage, to strengthen, for me to give to, to be, you know, relational with. And I think that's so important. And then my faith with God. I've been on a really roller coaster journey with that. I felt at certain points that my faith with God was through my mother. I felt at certain points that I didn't have enough faith, that I didn't do the things I was supposed to, or it wasn't working the way I wanted it to. And if you had faith, then why doesn't this happen? So I've had questions, real deep questions over the years, but that constant questioning 
and seeking God and asking those questions has really underpinned my life. So those are the three things that I would say work together for my narrative. So for me, what works for your narrative? We just looked at Jesus and this is what the big story of, of our salvation works. But actually, if we thought about three things that underpin your life, what is it? Like what underpins your life? So, um, yeah, have a think about that. That's a challenge, isn't it? Have a lovely day and see you soon. Bye.